Hello. Uh, we learned uh, the definition of the covariance, how, how to calculate the covariance. It's pretty much similar to the variance, but a little more complicated because it involves two random variables. But uh, let, let's simply consider uh, a data with only three observations, right? So uh, restrict our data to North America, to Canada, US, and, uh, and Mexico. And sim I also simplify the numbers. So the actual numbers are different, but I simplified. So Canada's average temperature is minus five degrees Celsius, and USA is 10 degrees, and Mexico 25 degrees. Uh, and why GDP per capita in dollars is 35,000, 40,000, and 15,000, right? I simplified all the numbers, and we are going to calculate uh, the covariance using only three observations, okay? Oh, by the way, just without calculating the covariance, it is not easy to see the direction because the temperature, so this is order uh, in the temperature from the lowest to the lo highest. So as the temperature increases, GDP per capita first increased and then drops a lot. So if, if uh, as it is increasing, if, it, if the GDP per capita were decreasing or increasing, then the direction would be pretty easily determined. But uh, the, it, while it is increasing, the GDP per capita does not have any uh, clear pattern. So we have to uh, numerically calculate which is dominating. So we will calculate the covariance. How we do it? First step is to calculate the mean. It is like variance. So you need to calculate the mean mean uh, to have the center. So if you calculate the mean, mean of x is uh, average of these three numbers, which is simply 10. And also you can calculate average of these three numbers, which is easy. Calculate this uh, average of these three numbers, then you will get 30,000. So uh, first step is to calculate the mean for each variable. And then now and then like we did in the variance, calculate the deviation for x and for y. Now we have two variables. So x, when you calculate the deviation of x, of course you subtract the x, the mean of x from uh, each observation. So minus 5 minus 10 is minus 15. 10 minus 10, 0. 25 minus 10 is 15. So when you calculate deviation of x, of course, you use observations in x and its average. Now you use y, y variable observations, and y's average. So 35,000 minus 30,000, 5,000. 40,000 minus 30,000, so 10,000. 15,000 minus 30,000, minus 15,000. Okay? So as you see, you are treating two variables respectively, separately up to this point, right? And then, now you multiply these two deviations, right? So here, those two variables start to interact, right? So multiply minus 15 to 5,000, you get minus 70, 75,000, and zero times something, zero, 15 times minus 15,000, so minus 225,000. So, as you see, one, when you calculate uh, uh, cross product of deviations, all the observations are minus or zero. So easily the relationship is negative, right? right. So, and then you, you add these three numbers and divide by two. Because the sample size is three, you have to subtract one, then you get a uh, minus 150,000 for the variance. The variance is this number. Okay, so in the end, we can say that uh, the direction, the relationship is negative. Right? Graphically, this is how it works. So Canada is here, USA is here, Mexico is here. Then trend line will go like this. Okay, so uh, that is the, so just Canada is slightly below the trend, U.S. is slightly above the trend, Mexico is also below the trend, then you can explain the negative uh, trend. 
Okay, so it was easy when you, it was similar to what you did in the variance chapter. So calculating the covariance uh, involves a little more annoying algebra, but it's doable. And we are going to do some experiment. We will study the properties of the covariance. First, what we are going to do is we are going to change our data. So basically, uh, we will change the unit. In the original data, the temperature was measured in Celsius and GDP was in dollars. But now I will change the temperature into Fahrenheit. And I will change the GDP in thousand dollars because the numbers were too large so I dropped three zeros and call it uh, in terms of thousand dollars and then observations change like this so Canada was minus five degrees in Celsius if you transform it will become 23 degrees in Fahrenheit and USA 10 degrees Celsius becomes 50 degrees Fahrenheit so 25 Celsius becomes 77 Fahrenheit Okay, so I change the temperature into Fahrenheit and GDP per capita. Simply I drop three zeros. 35,000 becomes simply 35. 40,000, 40. 15,000, 15. Okay, so even though I change the numbers, basically we are doing the same data. We are working on the same data. Uh, and now try this, your practice. Uh, what is the covariance uh, based on these uh, numbers. Use the sample version formula. Okay. Okay. You need a uh, pen and paper to calculate that, or you can open Excel or calculator, whatever, and resume the video when you are done. So, let's see what happens. So first, uh, I I calculated the mean for you here. The mean temperature in Fahrenheit is fifty. And mean uh, G GDP per capita in thousand dollars is thirty. So also that is uh, easy to calculate from these numbers. And then W uh, new random variable W. Oh, uh, you have to subtract fifty. So you get these values, these numbers. And new variable Z has the average of thirty. So subtract thirty from here, then you get uh, deviations like this, right? Two deviations. And multiply, and your multiplicate multi when you multiply, you get uh, this number, these numbers, and uh, sum those three numbers and divide by two, and minus one. That is minus two hundred and seventy. So the covariance in these numbers is minus two hundred and seventy. Right? The answer is C. Okay, then. Uh, what you see here is, it is weird because actually I said we are doing the same data. We are working on the same data, just the, the only difference is I change it Celsius into Fahrenheit and I change it like dollar into thousand dollars. But basically the same data but covariance changes a lot. Here minus 150,000 now becomes minus 270. Good news is sign is the same. The sign does not change because that's the direction of the relationship, which should be the same, right? So direction does not change, but what does this number imply? That is the problem. Here is the answer. So that is related to the property. So covariance changes when you change the measurement unit. So you are basically what you just did is changing the unit of the measurement. So in our example, uh, Fahrenheit can be written as 1.8 times Celsius plus 32. Okay, this was the transformation between Celsius into Fahrenheit. And for GDP per capita, I divide by 1000, drop three zeros. Okay, this is the transformation I did. And as a result, we obtain these two covariances before transformation, after transformation, before and after. There is a huge difference, but uh, the pattern is here. Why did we get this number? Because of these multiplications. So, so 
when we transform x to y, uh, x to w, excuse me, x to w, you multiply point, 1.8, and y to z, you multiply 1 over 1000. Those multiplications are preserved in the covariance. So the original covariance multiplied by 1 over 1000 times 1 1.8 becomes the new covariance. Calculate that. If you, so if you see, check that, check this, then you will get a minus 270. Uh, and another interesting thing here is plus 32 does not affect. Plus 32 has no effect on the covariance because adding or subtracting some number is just parallel shift. Like both two two uh, variables will move par like parallel, so it does not change the the direction. The direction is not affected. The relationship is not affected by parallel shift. So addition or subtraction does not affect. But when you multiply something, that means you are extending or shrinking the scale. So that will affect those numbers, the magnitude of the the absolute value of the covariance by this way, right? So in general, this is what we have. Uh, so suppose that you have original pair of random variables x and y, but you transform them into w and z by multiplying a plus b or a multiplying c plus d, then you get new variables. Then the new covariance, new covariance is affected only by the multiplication. Plus b plus d uh, does not affect uh, the covariance at all. This is exactly same as the variance. We, we learned some similar property in variance. So addition does not change the variance, but multiplication changes the variance. Here, because there are two variables, uh, like there are two possible multiplications that can affect the covariance, right? So this is a clear and intuitive property. When you understand this property, those numbers now are explained, right? Why they are so much different, even we are using the same, basically the same data. Still, so we understand the property, but this is not ideal. We don't like such a uh, change of uh, unit, like so. When you change the change the unit, the relationship remains the same, but your measure changes. That is a problem. That is not desirable uh, as a measure. So then, what we can conclude here is, okay, from the covariance, now we can interpret if it is positive or negative. The sign of the covariance is uh, is is interpretable. We know what it means, has a meaning, has some meaning. The direction, the sign of the relationship is reflected in the sign. However, the absolute value, the absolute value has no meaning. That's our conclusion. So the absolute value of the covariance will be easily affected by the measurement unit. When you change the measure, uh, then uh, you are going to get another covariance. So that cannot be interpreted. There, there is no uh, practical meaning in the magnitude, the, the absolute value of the covariance. For example, that means, so for example, even if you have like 150,000 covariance, it doesn't mean the relationship is strong. Or even if the covariance is small, that doesn't mean the relationship is weak. So simply no meaning, right? So that is, uh, we sum or to sum like to summary to summarize, covariance captures the direction. The sign of the covariance means something, but the absolute value of the covariance doesn't mean anything. So as a result, we need another measure to capture the strength of the relationship. So remember, we wanted to study the direction of the relationship and the strength of the relationship. So direction is handled by the covariance. The sign of the covariance captures the direction, but the strength is not yet quantified, right? So we are going to now uh, study 
what happens when you uh, how to calculate the strength okay that is the correlation coefficient so remember the problem with the covariance is the unit measurement unit affects the covariance so we cannot tell whether it is large or small then to resolve that problem the idea is we can standardize standardization will always make the unit into standard deviation right so st when you standardize then you know how how much the deviations are you, you have a better measurement unit more objective measurement unit in here so replace the deviations with a standardized deviation you are now familiar with what it is subtract the average and divide by standard deviation that is standardization okay so formula is pretty much the same here instead of deviation in x you put devi standardized deviation in x and instead of deviation in y you put standardized deviation in y and then so by factoring out the uh, denominators and the numerators are basically the same as uh, covariance so you can write this thing correlation coefficient is a uh, standardized covariance but it is standardized by both standard deviations because there are two random variables involved so you have to use uh, two standard deviations to standardize the covariance and then mathematically this covariance uh, this correlation coefficient the standardized version uh, is always in between minus 1 and 1 it is not affected by the measurement unit it's unit free so even if you change the unit again still the correlation coefficient is the same because it is standardized okay so uh, that is one desirable desirable property we obtained here and second because it has clear objective unit now you can see the strength of the relationship so if correlation co coefficient is 0.9 then you can say oh the relationship is pretty strong but if correlation coefficient is minus 0.9 then or oh, you can tell it is negative and very strong okay so it tells you about the sign and the absolute value both are informative uh, with correlation coefficient okay okay then here here I will show you so this was the graph I gave I showed you in an earlier slide but uh, so at the time I explained this is strong relationship this is a uh, weak weaker relationship but they are captured by the correlation coefficients if you calculate their correlation coefficient right hand side is 0.9 pretty strong but left hand side is 0.5 okay so the correlation coefficient is used to uh, capture the strength or how tight the relationship is so uh, uh, when a relationship is strong that means there are the deviations are smaller from the trend line okay and this is another example when the correlation coefficient is minus one or one perfect uh, relationship in this case there is no deviation so this is possible only when there is no deviation but the data line up perfectly on a straight line so then it is perfect case of course in reality you are not going to see this kind of uh, data it does not exist in real world but just a mathematical uh, extreme case and still I am telling you another one more time we are only thinking about linear relationship so correlation between x uh, correlation between x and y can be zero when you think about when you have this kind of relationship so when x increases y does not increase it's flat this is flat uh, this is zero correlation or you can think about vertical scatter plot that is also fine or literally you can think about no relationship 
right? So kind of purely random things. But also, what I'm telling you here is zero does not imply just just flat thing. There is a relationship. So this is a pretty perfect uh, U-shaped like a um, quadratic relationship. But linearly, the trend is here. If you have to draw a straight line as a trend, you have to put it like this. So it is flat, so correlation is zero. Even if the relationship is very clear. This is because we are only studying the linear relationship. If relationship is nonlinear, then it is beyond the capability of correlation coefficient or covariance. So correlation coefficient uh, has the same limitation as the covariance. We are or we cannot handle nonlinear relationship. So it may be uh, mis misleading in this sense. Okay. So then let's let's calculate the correlation coefficient. So it will be uh, using the same original data in Celsius and just in dollars. We already calculated the covariance uh, was minus one hundred and fifty thousand. What we just need to like to change the covariance into the correlation coefficient, what we need are the standard deviations. So calculate standard deviation of these three numbers. Also another correlation co uh, standard deviation for these numbers. You may use Excel so we can calculate these numbers. Right? Ah, by the way, because we use the covariance uh, using the sample version formula, so you have to match the same version. So here, standard deviations are calculated based on the sample version formula. So you have to match the, the uh, formulas, of course. And then, uh, just what you did, what you do here is, the covariance is standardized by two standard deviations. Divide by two standard deviations and you get minus 0.7559, which is still pretty strong, right? close to minus 1. Okay? This is how you calculate correlation coefficient. So calculate covariance first and then standard deviations and then standardize. That is correlation coefficient. Okay, now it is your turn. Um, now calculate uh, the correlation coefficient using new data after transformation. Right? So I will stop the video here and I will leave it to you. Uh, finish this question and start the next one, next video. Okay.